find it difficult to go to confession? Does God seem like a stern, distant account keeper of sins, dispensing punishments? Do you feel that God is angry and disapproving of you every time you do something wrong? Every year during the season of Lent, we hear about going to confession. For some of us, like me, while growing up, there was a lot of parental pressure to do it as a non-negotiable. So out of fear of um, our parents or out of guilt or out of fear of going to hell or some other dire consequence that might happen because of sin, we just go and do it out of an obligation and like checking a box somewhere so that we have completed this activity. Has this been your experience? In other cases, there is no guidance or pressure from home at all. And we may not even have known that it is a minimum requirement to go to confession at least once a year as Catholics. And so we may have ignored the practice of going to confession altogether. Is this your situation? We may have tried at times to read bits and pieces of the Bible and may have read words like wrath, anger, vengeance, flood, plagues, and fire and brimstone in relation to God and sin. And this may have caused an unhealthy fear and even probably caused us to want to stay away from this kind of God. All of these put together does not make confession something that we would like to run to at most times because we describe confession as getting back with God. So who is this God that we really need to get back with? I'd like to share with you a few scripture passages that blew my mind about the unchanging love of God and how God, even when He is punishing, is full of love. I hope these help us in our journey to the confessional. In the very beginning, we know of the fall of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis and how God sent them out of the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3.22 says, Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man. This might seem like a punishment and this might seem like God was angry with man. But the saints Ephraim and Chrysostom tell us that this was an act of love. God did not want man to be eternally separated from him and eternally suffer because of sin. And so, although the tree of life was available to man to eat freely from before sin, man had to be kept away from it after the fall. And therefore, sending Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden was God's love poured out because of his desire to be with us for eternity. The next great punishment that we hear about is the great flood that destroyed everything except Noah and his family and those who were on the ark. In the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 to 20, we read, For Christ also died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark. It is a matter of faith that Christ brought the good news to the souls that died before him when he descended into hell. So we see that God's love extended even to those who died in the flood and were disobedient to him through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God is love and love alone throughout history. Let us move forward to the plagues that affected the Egyptians. When we read of them, we think that God was on the side of the Israelites and hated the Egyptians. The Book of Wisdom, chapter 11, verses 5 to 9, tells us otherwise. So if you can grab your Bible and go through it, we will see how God actually was helping the Egyptians come back to him as well. We see in this reference 
that the plagues that were brought upon the Egyptians during the time of Moses were not only to free the Israelites from the slavery to Egypt, but also to help the Egyptians recognize and return to the true God. Let's move forward to the next big event, the conquest of the promised land by the Israelites. God directs Joshua multiple times to completely obliterate the people of the promised land, those who were dwelling there before the Israelites came. This might seem harsh and very violent, but the book of wisdom tells us why God wanted this of the people of Israel. The people who inhabited the land, the promised land before the Israelites came there were people who worshipped other gods and the worship included the sacrifice of children, of human beings and many other violent acts. So there was great evil in the land. So even though the inhabitants of the, whole, of the promised land were evil, the word of God in Wisdom chapter 12 verse 8 says, But even these you spared since they were but men and sent wasps as forerunners of your army to destroy them little by little. Judging them little by little, you gave them an opportunity to repent. Though you were not unaware that their origin was evil and their wickedness inborn and that their way of thinking would never change. So we see through all these examples that the heart of God is love for everyone, even for the worst of sinners and even when he knows that they will never repent. So how much more is his love and his mercy and his yearning for each and every one of us to return to him? You are merciful to all for you can do all things and you overlook people's sins so that they may repent. For you love all things that exist and detest none of the things that you have made. For you would not have made anything if you had hated it. How would anything have endured if you had not willed it? Or how would anything not called forth by you have been preserved? You spare all things for they are yours, O Lord, you who love the living. In this graceful season of Lent, I pray that you and I experience the confession as a leaning in to receive a hug from God our Father, a place to experience the love and mercy which God has always wanted to fill our lives with. As we experience true reconciliation with God, let us also strive to be kind and merciful to those who have injured us. Let this Lent bring reconciliation into our hearts, into our homes, and into our communities.